So yes, there are some side effects from uh, taking the COVID-19 vaccine. Most of those side effects are what we consider local side effects. The most common side effect that we will experience when we receive this vaccine is simply some pain at the injection site in our shoulder. Uh, it goes away within a day or two, uh, and in the vast majority of cases, that is considered a, a mild or a moderate uh, response. Uh, should not be debilitating, uh, should not have any effect on, on your ability to, to, to function. A very small percentage of people may experience some swelling and redness at the injection site as well, but, but that is uh, uh, relatively rare. The other side effects you might experience are what we consider systemic side effects. And the most common systemic side effects that, that we will experience are, are potentially a low-grade fever, uh, as well as uh, just a, a feeling of fatigue. Uh, and really these, these indicate to us that our body is doing exactly what we're asking it to. It is responding to this vaccine. And so we feel that in our body, um, really in the same way that we feel a cold or maybe the flu first, first coming on. But again, those systemic side effects will go away within a day or two uh, and should not linger past that. And in the vast majority of us, those will be mild or, or moderate. Very rarely do we see any severe uh, side effects with this vaccine. Yes, based on everything we know at this time, this is a very safe vaccine. In the individuals that were part of the clinical trial to assess safety of this vaccine, there were no adverse, uh, severe adverse events associated with vaccination. So, Again, based on everything we know, this is as safe as, as a vaccine can be. So currently, this vaccine is approved for anyone 16 years old and older. And so right now, uh, children younger than 16 uh, should not receive the vaccine and, and will not receive the vaccine, although we expect that may change over time. Uh, there was some concern uh, based on some reported incidents of severe allergic reactions, uh, which uh, we may have uh, seen reported in the news. And in fact, uh, the CDC's most recent recommendation is that even in those individuals that have a history of a severe allergic reaction, and really what we mean is an anaphylactic reaction, even those individuals uh, can still receive this vaccine, but they do need to inform their healthcare provider and the individual administering the vaccine that they have a history of severe allergic reactions to injectable vaccines. Even people with a history of allergic reactions to something like peanut butter or bee stings should still receive this vaccine. Uh, at this time, we don't believe that that, that history has any uh, influence on your potential to react strongly to this vaccine. And finally, the other group that uh, should not receive the vaccine are those individuals that are currently under isolation or quarantine for COVID-19. Uh, the guidance from the CDC right now is that you need to wait until your isolation period is up before you go to get the vaccine. And that's so that we're not uh, introducing COVID into the vaccine clinics. And so you can wait. You can wait until that 14 day period is up and then go get the vaccine. So any side effects from a vaccine typically present within the first two months after the vaccine. And so the clinical trials around this vaccine followed uh, the study subjects for, for two months and uh, identified any ad, uh, side effects that occurred in that population. Beyond that, it is very unlikely for there to be any lasting long-term side effects to any vaccine beyond that two month period. But at this time, we actually can't determine with certainty that there are no long-term side effects, but we expect that to actually be highly unlikely. And again, any side effects would most likely occur within the first two months after receiving the vaccine. So it's not suspicious if you understand how a phase three vaccine trial actually works. In a phase three trial, and in this phase three trial, there were 40,000 people identified and enrolled into this study for the Pfizer vaccine. 
half of those people received the vaccine, half of those people received a placebo, basically salt water. And at the time, no one involved in the study knew whether a person was receiving the vaccine or the placebo. Then the investigators had to wait until that population of 40,000 people had a certain number of cases actually occur. And in this case, it was just under 200 cases, uh, about 190 cases. And once it reached 190 cases, and only then did the investigators unblind the study and determine who got the vaccine and who got the placebo. That was then able to demonstrate that there was efficacy of this vaccine and that there were very few cases in the, in the vaccine group. The reason why that occurred so quickly is actually because there is so much COVID currently circulating here in the U.S. If you're developing a vaccine to a disease with a very low prevalence, you have to wait longer until you reach that number of cases within your study population. In this case, we were able to get to 200 cases in the study population within two months. And again, that's why this this study, this particular study, was able to occur so quickly. We actually don't know the answer to this question yet. And again, that's because COVID has been with us for just about a year now. And this vaccine has really only been studied in, uh, in large numbers for the past few months. We are fairly confident that the vaccine will protect us for up to at least six months after vaccination. We don't yet know if it will last a full year or two years or five years. We need time to understand that. And as we move forward over the next year or two, we will be able to determine whether this vaccine lasts beyond a year. It's quite possible. And in fact, there are some plans that we may need booster vaccines in the future. Perhaps every year we may need to be revaccinated against COVID-19, but at this point we don't have the information we need to determine that for sure. Well, this is a great question, uh, and I think based on all of the estimates and the information we have right now, we are optimistic that by this summer of 2021, anyone who wishes to take a vaccine will have the opportunity to do so.